Hi, Moms Making Six Figures. Today, I have the privilege of interviewing Heather. And oh my goodness, this woman is organized. She she owns Tidy Style Homes, which is you have to go and follow them on Instagram. I get so inspired by all of her little videos and just who she is as a person. I think you're really going to love this interview. And I like this interview for so many reasons. She is such a different type of entrepreneur, and there's so many teaching moments in um, her talking about that journey. So welcome to Moms Making Six Figures and enjoy. Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. My name is Heidi Bartolotta. I'm your host. In this podcast, you will hear real women, real stories, and real inspiration. If you enjoy it, please subscribe. Thank you, Heather, for being here with me today. I appreciate it. You're welcome. I would love for you to start out talking about how you ended up in the career that you're in, because I I love love this after chatting with you. So will you just talk about that? Yeah. So I came from marketing and advertising world. That's what I did for, I think, around 10 years, 10, 15 years um, before I came to this. And I got married a little bit later. My husband and I got married when I was 35. And um, I had been working my whole life. I started working when I was 12 years old, and I've been working at least one to two jobs ever since. And so when we got married kind of late, and so we were like, let's get on the baby train and make that happen. And so um, it never occurred to me that when the baby came, I wouldn't want to work anymore. But when the baby came and people told me, you're not going to want to keep working at the pace that you are, because I was working a fairly fast paced job. I was traveling a lot. My husband traveled a lot. And I just figured there'll be a way to make it work. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think it was about six months after having my baby and I was about to go back to work and I was just like, I can't do this. I I want to, I waited this long to have a kid. I don't want to only see her one hour in the morning and one hour at night. So I decided to stay home and, you know, I was really feeling pretty fulfilled staying home with my baby. Um, My husband jokes because I would... I needed to be busy still. And with the baby, it's like, yeah, you're busy, but you're not always busy. And so I was like on the Food Network making like gourmet meals for dinner every night, like, (laughs) you know, surf and turf. And my husband was like, we don't need these like really elaborate meals every night for dinner. And I was like, I just need to be busy. And then, bam, uh, pregnant with the second baby. And so then I had two under two and I was super busy. So it wasn't until my kids were both like in preschool part time to where I started thinking about what might I want to do is like my second act. Like I'm now 40 and I want to do, I want to get back into working, but I don't want to work at like the fast pace I was working. That was too stressful for me anyway. By the time I quit that career, I was having like daily panic attacks. Um, And so it was just like the pressure was just too much. And Mm -hmm. so I was like, I don't want to do that, but what really can I do? And I started thinking about like, okay, I need a flexible schedule. I want to do something I'm interested in. So I started thinking like retail. I love fashion. It's always been an interest of mine. But I started looking into it and I'm like, I'm literally going to spend every dollar I make at whatever store I work at. And I'll have to work weekends and nights. And I just don't want to do that. And it just wasn't worth it to me. Mm -hmm. And so just kind of researching like what's out there for a mom who wants a flexible schedule And I didn't have to work, so I wanted it to be something I was interested in. And there wasn't a lot. Like, I couldn't find a lot of options. And so I started thinking about, okay, well, what if I start my own business, which was never something that was on my radar, ever, ever. I am a person who values stability so much. And so for me to go out on that limb to, like, start a business of my own was, like, never going to happen. But it was at that point in life where I was, I had like a safety net and my safety net had a safety net. And I was like, I could actually do this. And um, organizing was just natural because I've always been a natural, I'm not, nat- I call myself a natural born organizer. I've been organizing since I was a kid. It was just my way, always my way of 
kind of creating a calm in a chaotic space. Mm -hmm. And so it was really, for me, always about a feeling, not about perfection and achieving perfection with like my books in rainbow order. It wasn't really about that. It was about like having a space I could create for myself that I just felt calm in. And so I was I totally really, agree with you, by the way. Yeah. I say that to people all the time. They're like, you're so, everything's always in order. I'm like, because it makes me peaceful. Yes. I, I like the calm of it. <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah. life is like chaotic. I mean, I learned that from an early age. Like you cannot control what's going to come at you in life. Yeah. And life can be hard. And if you can't, what you can control is your space and your environment to a certain extent. And so for me, organization was like, in the beginning, like early on and as a kid, it was like a, um, it was just a, it was just a way of me bringing my own calm to my life, however I could. And so I grew up with that and I just really never thought of it as like a business. Um, but I was thinking, okay, what am I good at? I'm good at spelling. There's no way I can make a business out of that. Um, <laughs> I'm good at organizing. And so I kind of started doing some research and I found a company called The Home Edit who they now have a Netflix show and they've just exploded. But when I found them, they were like, they were, I don't know if they were bi-coastal at that time, but it was like they were doing professional organizing. They were doing it well. And I was like, okay, that's, that's a business model. Let me take a look at what they're doing and how they're doing it. And I really kind of studied everything about how they created their business and even from what they were charging, which we charged a fraction of that. But I was trying to figure out like, okay, how to structure this and make it a business. And it was like, I got the idea. And by the end of the week, I had my website built. I built it. I was just like, I became like, I was so passionate about what I was going to be creating that mm -hmm. it was like all I could think about. Um, so I, yeah, I built the website. By the end of the week, I was like, well, the website's built. Like maybe I should just go live and make a business and just see. And my my idea was if I could book one client a week, like somehow book one client a week <laughs> and it would be a little side job and it would be so fun and it would give me a little outlet for creativity because organization is really, there's a lot of creativity that goes into it mm -hmm. too and problem solving and all the things that kind of kept me, my, my interest peaked. Um, but yeah, and so that first year really was like that. It was like I had one client a week. I That first year I took the summer off, no problem. It was great. And I had felt like I had a really good balance between the family. And, and how many clients per week now? Oh my gosh. Well, so <laughs> we have two crews that run every day. Yeah, I was gonna and, say. Um, so yeah, it's gotten way busier than I ever even hoped. Like I didn't even have hopes that it would get this big. Mm -hmm. I really didn't. I just wanted to create a little side job for myself that I enjoyed. And then, you know, it was the after that first year and maybe even before the first year was up, I was like, I need somebody else to be on these organization jobs with me because some of these are becoming like marathon organizations because from the beginning, I was like, I want each space to be organized within one session. I don't want to leave a client with it partly done and then come I'm back right. because then we're going to slide back before I can finish it. So it was always very important to me that the whole space was organized within one session. That sometimes meant I was at a client's house till like eight at night and my kids are at home like calling me and I'm like, oh, what am I doing with my <laughs> <Right>. life here? <laughs> so I finally did have to hire somebody. And then it was like shortly after I hired her, then I hired four more. And so... Um, it just it just grew like year after year, and now we're in year six, and we have um, I think last I checked we had like twenty five people. So I say like because I have a few that are oh just put me on the schedule if you really need me, right. but um, I really Tetris my schedule together with a lot of moms that want to work anywhere from one to three days a week, and then we have some some um, project managers that are. They're not moms. I, I want to say I created this because I wanted to make a really, um, I wanted to create an option for moms for flexibility, but I also have a lot of people on my team that are not moms, but that was kind of my goal with, with creating a job for myself and then subsequently creating a job for other moms that needed that flexibility. We start our day at 930, which allows for school drop off. Mm -hmm. We try to end by 330. That's the goal. It doesn't always happen, but really concerned with like, uh, making the day look like family time, work time, and then back to the family. Mm -hmm. So interesting. I don't think you and I talked about this, but that's how my brand got started originally as well. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. So I know that this was not 
a goal for you, but do you remember when you hit six figures? Do you remember when it happened? Um, well, I I made six I made six figures before I know I started you did, but job. but in the but in, in your business this business. Mm-hmm. Um, the only reason I say that is because it wasn't really important to me. To be I know. honest, it was more about um, you know what we were creating as far as a workspace and what we were giving to our clients, and mm-hmm. so. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think once I create, started my business, it took probably four to five years before I was actually making money that I wasn't immediately reinvesting back back into into the business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's actually a really good, I think, point Mm -hmm. and something that a lot of people that are maybe listening to the podcast that are starting their own businesses, or maybe they have a business right now that they're starting to scale. Uh Will you talk a little bit about that, about investing back in your business? I don't think any of my previous interviewees have ever talked about that aspect of their business. Yeah. So in the beginning, it was like, okay, I want to pay myself. So I did pay myself a little bit of a paycheck in the beginning, like an hourly rate. And yeah, but I was like constantly putting back into the business because I knew to make it a scalable business, I had to have certain infrastructure set up. And so it was like, okay, this, I can only do it this way for so long. If I want to grow in any way, I'm going to have to set up the infrastructure. So that meant investing from the start. Um, But, you know, yeah, it was what really like motivated me to like reinvest was I would grow and I would get to the point where it was like so uncomfortable where, okay, I was doing the organization and I was doing the social media and I was doing the scheduling and I was doing the ordering and I was doing it all. And I was working like 12 to 15 hours a day in the beginning. And I'd be at on my phone at 10 at night in bed, like working. Mm -hmm. And my husband's like, I thought you started this so that you could set your own schedule. And like, you're working all. And I'm like, I just, I think because I am a little bit of, um, I hate the term control freak, but like I'm a perfectionist. And so I want things done a certain way. And I had such a hard time, like letting go of anything. Mm -hmm. Um, but I got to a point where I was like, for me to grow this business, I have to delegate things. I have to let go. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was investing in having someone do the books. That was like the first thing that I delegated out. I am not, that's not my wheelhouse. Excel like immediately makes me want to cry. So I'm going to delegate that out right away. And then, you know, tax law and and like the legal stuff. Like I don't know about that. So immediately Mm -hmm. I had to get in touch with a lawyer and figure out, am I doing this the right way? Can I have people sign and non-compete? How can I... um, yeah, structure myself for growth where I'm protecting myself at the same time. So it was like delegating things out. So those were like the the first investments I made in the business were um, taking things off my plate. And then it was like, okay, actually it really only happened last year to where we used to have all of our inventory in my personal garage at home. And so it got oh, to the wow. point where my husband was like, yeah, you know, I would love to have a garage again, like where we could park and <laughs> I was like, you are so right. This is not sustainable. So then we moved all of our inventory off site. So that was like another big investment. But I was always from the beginning, very mindful of, I say stability was super important to me. I'm not a risk taker. Being an entrepreneur, you have to take risks um, to grow. And I learned that, but I was like, I wanted those to be like calculated risks to where I was really ready to do it. And so, okay, it wasn't until like a year ago where... um, I was finally ready to take on, like, the overhead of, like, okay, now we're storing our inventory Mm off-site. So I had to do it, like, baby steps where I was comfortable because I I didn't want to ever have all this overhead to where I never went in the red in the business. Not once. Not one day. And that was important to me. It was, like, I needed to have the money to reinvest and grow. If I didn't have the money to buy, you know, like, my social media girl needed some better Mm -hmm. lighting and whatever. If I didn't have the money to do it, we were waiting until I did. Like, we just never went into the red on anything. I love that you said that. And, you know, when you and I were having the conversation before you agreed to come on the podcast, I thought this is going to be a really great one for our our listeners because you are very, I would say, conservative as an entrepreneur, right? Yes. And I think think that that is a really important point that, There's a lot of personalities out there that think, oh, I could never be an entrepreneur because Mm -hmm. of this or this or this. And you almost prove all of them wrong. 
okay. you've done it very successfully. And I love this story because of that, because you you did it your way. And I think that, that that's just really cool. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's, when I say this is something I was never going to do, like <laughs> I actually used to sell advertising to small businesses. So I worked with small business, mm-hmm. small to mid- medium-sized businesses all the time. And I just remember like, just I had so much admiration for these entrepreneurs because they were like risk takers and they were like out on a limb all the time. And especially in small businesses, like every dollar they spent, it wasn't coming from this like magical business budget. It was their money. Right. And I was very aware of that. And I was like, oh, so I was stressed for them, like when they were making investments and with advertising and things. And I was like, I want this to work so much. And so I, I remember just like that experience with working with those small business owners and always thinking about like how I admired people that could do that. And a lot of these people I worked with, not only had they started one business, they had started multiple businesses and some of them failed and they dusted themselves off and got back up again. And I was like, oh my gosh, the grit that it takes to be a small business owner. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I have that. Like I have always taken the easy path as far as What can I do that will provide me with, like, stability and calm? And that's all I want in this world. That's all Mm -hmm. I need. Um, But it wasn't until I really had that in my personal life where I was like, okay, now maybe I can go out on the limb a little bit. And so it wasn't ever for me a big, like, oh, I'm going out. Like, people ask, like, how was starting the business? It was like the barrier to entry was very minimal, I I have a graphic design background, so I knew how to design my website. I designed that, and that was easy enough for me. Um, And what else? I went down and got a business license, and Mm -hmm. I, you know, I figured out my business name. I brainstormed that for a few days and figured out. But it was like, as far as, like, getting a license to be a professional organizer, you don't have to get a license. There really isn't one. I mean, you can get certified by certain groups, but it was really the barrier to entry was pretty small. Mm-hmm. So it was easy to get started. But the amount of work and the time amount of work. and effort and the fact that you were sitting in bed at night on your computer tells people. Yeah. yeah. So the barrier to entry <laughs> financially was small. It was like, right. okay, I can get this going. Right. And in the beginning, I bought the inventory that I needed for a project and returned what I didn't use at the end mm-hmm. of the job. I was like, I can't afford to carry an inventory. So that's how I did it. It was like, I'm going and buying and then I'm returning what I don't use at the end. And then I'm sometimes even if I'm that means I'm rebuying the same stuff next week. That's how I did it. And I did that did it that way for a while. It wasn't until maybe like a year in where I actually could afford to carry an inventory. Mm -hmm. Um, So that took a little bit of time. But yeah, the work and I'm never I've never been afraid of hard work. I am a a naturally hard worker. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I started working when I was 12. I really did. I went to school and I worked at my aunt's flower shop every day after school and on weekends. And then I grabbed a second job because I wanted to buy a car. And, um, you know, it was just one of those things. If I wanted things, I had to buy them. I learned that I remember like seventh grade, like, hey, mom, when are we going school clothes shopping? Oh, we're not doing that this year. We don't have any money. So it was like, from that moment on, I was like, oh, if I'm if I want anything in this world, I'm gonna have to figure out how to get it. Mm-hmm. And so I and I'm so grateful for that because it did instill a really good work ethic in me. Um, but like right now, my goal is to like work hard enough to where I can not work. So it's like working hard, working hard to like be able to like relax and enjoy my time with my kids and my family. And so I was trying to figure out that whole how that looks. And that's where I'm at right now. It's like, do I need to delegate more? Because I've delegated and delegated. But, you know, in my business, it's like everything I delegate, if it's not, um, you know, the actual organizers who is a service-based business. So we get paid based on an hourly rate. So everything that I delegate outside of organizers is taking out of my profit. Sure, yeah. But for me, I'm like, you know what? It's Am I in it for the money or am I in it because I'm creating something that I'm passionate about and the money is really secondary to that? So I'm now I've gotten to a point where I'm comfortable delegating things out and growing it that way. And I'm just still trying to figure out like, okay, what's the next thing I can delegate out because I'm still working more than than I really want to be working. Mm -hmm. I'm still working more than a full-time job at this point with what I'm doing on the back end of managing the business. So with that, let's talk yeah. about motherhood a little bit. 
So how have you navigated, because this is one of the questions that we get asked a lot by our listeners is, how do they balance it? It's always that balance question. And I don't know that balance is the right word, honestly. But what would you say? Do you have a tip in that? Do you have something that you use to navigate I always tell people, like, people will sometimes say, like, can you organize my life? I'm like, no. I can <laughs> organize spatially. As far as, like, organizing your life, like, I, I, I'm I, trying to figure it out. I still, it's like a, I'm a work in progress that way. I feel like I have no balance. I feel like I'm always, I'm either super into work and I'm, like, into, in there. And then I'm, like, then I realize, oh, wait, my kids need some. And then I'm, like, super into my kids. And then work pulls. And so it's, like, a push-pull. It's not, like, a balance for mm-hmm. me. Um, and that's... Um, I think that's what I'm doing with delegating more and more, yeah. delegating more out because I'm really not looking for um, a 50-50 balance. Like, really, my kids are the most important thing to me. My family's the most important thing to me. Um, this business is important to me because I've created a space for – I have so many wonderful women that work for me. We did have one man, and he he moved on, but he was awesome. But it's it's we have 25 women, and mm-hmm. they all love this job and put their heart and soul into it. And so it's important for me to grow the business so that I can – give them career growth opportunities. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, you're not just an organizer. You have a marketing background. Let's also make you our marketing manager. Oh, you have a social media background. Let's make you a social media manager. I want to create opportunities within the business for growth. Um, So it is important to me. I don't, like, want to downplay the importance of Tidy Style. I love the business. But for me, it's really about trying to get enough delegated out to where some of it is kind of automated and it's just happening. And then I can really focus on the kids more and more. I think like most working moms, you know, I, I hate to say it, but I feel guilt a lot of times because my idea was, okay, I can do the morning routine, get the kids to school, then I could start my work day. But it doesn't work that way. My That's clients are if- messaging me at all hours and I'm grateful for that because we're an in-demand business, and that's what you hope to be. Um, and with the way that our society is now, you don't feel like you can just turn it on at 9.30 and turn it off at 5.30 or whatever mm-hmm. that is. You feel like you have to be always available. Yeah. Um, so just trying to figure out, like, that, you know, now I've gotten the point where I'm, like, on the weekends, I'll text a client back and say, I'll text you. This is, Thank you for the info. I'll text you on Monday. And people are always so okay with that. Mm-hmm. So I'm just – I'm still trying to figure it out. It's like I don't have a great – system. I'm constantly trying to figure it out. And I've just realized now I'm, I am still working more than what I am comfortable with. I, um, tidy style is still pulling me away from my children more than I want it to. So how do I navigate like still growing the company and then not not sacrificing time with the kids and I'm trying to figure that and summer's coming and it's like oh my gosh you know at least when school season it was like school okay they're they're their structure their structure and yeah. they're at school for the day and I know I can fully focus um I talk a lot about in my social media about singular focus and how important that is um I tend to like kind of be all over the place and so I really have to like um, kind of train myself to like focus on one thing, complete it, and then to the next. And so it's about being intentional. Yeah. For me, it's like intentional with my time. I'm not uh, interested in wasting my time. And so if I'm going to look at Instagram, it's because I have said, you know what? I, I have 20 minutes. I want to go on Instagram and see what's <laughs> going on. It's not because I just out of impulse and picking up my phone and just kind of killing time. And then before I know it, it's an hour. Like it's just about being intentional with my time. Um, that's what I'm working on right now. I even have a bracelet that says be present. And for me, that's like be intentional with your time. And that's, that's such great advice. Though. Where I'm working I think all on. of us need to hear that yeah. at some point. And I do think that as a working mother myself, I think you go through different rhythms, right? Mm-hmm. There are different seasons. There's different rhythms. And the one thing that I will maybe – just because I am older than you and my kids are older than yours, say to you is that some of the power is allowing them to see you grow and learn and struggle. And because I've gotten feedback from my daughters over the years that Mm -hmm. they watch that a lot more closely than I thought they were and learn things from it. So you might be surprised at 
the things that you're teaching them. And yeah, that. I yeah. um So I, on that, so a couple of things. Um, I was telling a friend of mine yesterday, I'm like, I'm doing this podcast and I'm so nervous because I don't, I feel like it's hard to talk about yourself without sounding like you're bragging. Yeah. And so I'm like, how? And she's like, go on there and break. She's like, your daughter might hear this. She's like, do this mm-hmm. for the little ones. Like yeah. the people that, you know, the little girls that might, not that there's a lot of little girls listening to this, but she's like, pretend that your daughter is listening to this. Mm-hmm. And what would you want to put out that she could maybe learn from? And I'm like, oh, I love that point of view. Like that, because then you don't feel like you're breaking. You feel like you're really sharing, you know, what you've learned mm-hmm. through growing the business. And I also think, and this is not saying anything negatively about men, but men have no problem it, talking about too. their successes. <laughs> so true. And as women, for some reason, we shy away from it. And I think we need to do it more and do it for each other more. Yeah. And so I do I do hope that maybe this will that bring so that funny. out. So that's yeah. exactly what I said. I was like, yeah. if I was a man, I would have no, no problem, problem going on. <laughs> it is so funny. And then the other thing I want to say on that is my daughter. I just posted it on our um, Instagram this morning because I thought it was so cute. She, My daughter's literally started like five or six. I can't believe I just said literally. That's my daughter's influence. My nine-year-old daughter says literally <laughs> constantly. And now I'm starting to say it when it's not literal. But anyway, she has started these little businesses over the last year, like Oh. an art class and she's like put, making little flyers and posting around the neighborhood and so this morning it was like call Gemma for art lessons and <laughs> he leave a message with your kid's name and age and I will be teaching the class I am nine and it was just so cute and she, her and her little friends have started like all these different little businesses and I just think that's so cool and I mm-hmm. I gotta believe that's a little bit of my influence or because, a lot or a, a lot. lot yeah because yeah, I'm like where did she get that it's so cute and so she is watching and paying attention, and mm-hmm. and I lo- I just love that. But so one of the questions that I always ask is, do you have a book or podcast that you would recommend to Ooh. our listeners? Um, so I that's so funny. So um, for the Scout Guide, they just asked us like, what's your favorite book? And I am not like um a big self help like motivational kind of book reader. Mm-hmm. So um. I don't know if that's specifically what you're looking no, for, but whatever. <laughs> our podcast. Um, I do like so. Um, let me think. So I read this book in quarantine called This Tender Land, and so it is fictional, but it is the most beautiful book, and it was a perfect read for quarantine because it's pretty long. But I just love to read fiction because I love to escape when mm-hmm. I'm reading. Um, so yeah, I have read like a lot of different like kind of self help and like business kind of books and. I use the term read loosely. Like, I kind of skim those kind of books. I don't really get lost in those kind of books. If I'm going to read, it's going to be something that's, like, fictional so I can totally escape. Because I feel like I'm kind of in the business mindset more than I want to be anyway. Um, Podcasts. I need some good recommendations on podcasts. Maria Menounos has one. It's really about wellness. Mm -hmm. And um, I was drawn. She has a brain tumor. And my sister has a brain tumor. And she talks a lot about, like, wellness and natural healing. And I'm, like so into that yeah. if i think if i weren't doing organizing i'd be doing something in wellness um i always say like or home organization is like your foundation of wellness so That's if you awesome. have an organized home then you have like a good foundation to like build the rest of your wellness on but um i do like her podcast i think it's called better together and it's really like wellness based i'll have to check that one yeah out. i love it so what am i not asking you is there anything that i haven't asked that you would want to um, share? No, I, you know, I just think um, we collectively as women, from what I've noticed, put so much pressure on ourselves. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that, you know, for me, so another, I, another, um, I think it's like Boise Lifestyle Magazine. They put out a thing and um, for advertisers to advertise in there. And they put out a thing like asking, like, what is your advice to your younger self? And I was thinking about that. I'm like, what? I don't know if I would give my younger self advice because I'm so happy with where I've gotten to in life. I don't know if I would change anything. But one thing I did say, and I, and I think um, just to kind of take the pressure off, is like, it's good enough for me. It's good enough to be a nice person and to be hardworking. I don't have to be all things to all people. Um, 
you know, even thinking about preparing for this, it's like, I don't have to go on and be super charming and amazing. I just have to be me. Just, Mm -hmm. I'm a nice person. I'm a hardworking person. And that's good enough. That's all I have to offer some days. And that's good enough. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. That's a great close, actually. Awesome. Perfect. (laughs) Thank you again for being on with us. Thank you for having me. It's like such an honor to be, you know, even invited to do something like this. I love it. I'm so glad we did it. Oh, thank you.